Welcome to day 16 of going in carnivore in Thailand. Welcome back. First, lost one tenth of a kilo. Not a big day, not a little day. That's what, two tenths of a pound or four tenths of a pound, something like that. You know, it's, it's like two tenths of a pound. But uh, one tenth of a kilo, that's fine. What I do have a problem with is the fact I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping a lot. I'm not depressed, but I go to bed at, at uh, went to bed around 1 o'clock, somewhere that way, 1 a.m. Slept till 6 a.m. Felt like I needed to get up and go to the bathroom, which happens every once in a while. Did that, came back to bed. Next thing I knew, it was 11 a.m., Wow, 10 hours. That's a lot of sleep. If you've done carnivore, let me know in the comments whether or not this happens to you. Whether or not you have increased the number of hours you sleep, if you can. Some people have jobs and they go to bed at, you know, 10 and they got to wake up at 6 o'clock every morning. Or they go to bed at midnight and they got to wake up at 6 o'clock every morning. Or they only get four or five, six hours to sleep because of their schedule. I understand that. But if you went on Kinovore, like if you went on Carnivore and you've found yourself sleeping Longer, not just better, but longer. And I have looked at my Apple health statistics, and it seems like I get a little bit more deep sleep and a little bit more uh, regular sleep and less times waking up in the middle of the night. So that all seems improved. So leave it in the comments if, if you got anything. Now, speaking of comments, I want to go over a comment that was written to me a day ago by at sign Dave Borchard 2019. And I want to thank him for writing this comment. But let me show you this comment because it, it is very detailed. And he wrote, quitting vegetables and fruits, cold turkey will make it more likely that you'll have a period of diarrhea, but thou pass. Make sure to get your blood work done at the beginning of the carnivore diet so you can check the progress in 3 to 12 months. Make sure you have an A1C, a high glucose test. Uh, I actually did that Saturday. Uh, my A1C came down a little bit, but it's still too high. It's like 7.2. And my glucose test uh, in December, I was 360. Now they tested at the hospital, and it was 118 at the time. Good, but they moved the goalpost on me and said, oh, no, you got to be under 100 to be good. Yeah, I know some people say it's 126 before your pre-diabetes or whatever, but they want under 100. So he wrote that type 2 diabetes can be reversed usually in less than a year and that type 2 diabetes will destroy your life. He wrote about the diabetes, and mine's get better. He therefore went and gave his encouragement of his own testimony here, that his peak weight, he was a size 44 waist. That's not so bad. And that it was getting tight. When I started the carnivore diet, I was transitioning from a size 40 to a 38. But now he's a 32. Wow. His t-shirts went from XXL to XL to large. Now the large is getting baggy. He might have to go to medium t-shirts and he dropped five belt sizes in the past year. He noted that some people have to cut out cheese because cheese was stalling his weight loss, or at least he thinks it was stalling his weight loss. So he cut out cheese. And he said, watch out for constipation problems. If that happens, try adding some fiber to your diet. In the comments, tell me how you add the fiber in a carnivore diet when you can't add grains 
and fruits and vegetables for fiber. Where are you getting the fiber at in a carnivore diet? I mean, I appreciate this comment. You know the time it took for him to type all this out? He said, I watch hundreds of carnivore and health videos. I compiled a list of, of possible health improvements and things to search on YouTube. The list will make learning about improving your health easier. You might benefit from all the possible benefits that were achieved by hundreds of people. Eat to your food full, no starving, no calorie counting. Eliminate highly processed foods, vegetable and seed oils. Eliminate sugar, weight loss, improve your gut health, improve your heart health, improve your overall health, reduce inflammation, reduce osteoporosis, improve hypertension, sometimes improves vision, which would be great, and eye floaters could be eliminated. Now, I know I've researched eye floaters are sort of normal with a lot of people, but every once in a while you see this little thing like floating by your eye. Uh, they say it happens to a lot of people. I have them myself. It'll be interesting if I notice that I have less. Tinnitus sometimes is reduced or eliminated. It eliminates sleep apnea. My God, would I love to be able to sleep without a CPAP machine. That would be so great. Eliminates migraine headaches. I don't personally get them, but I know that some people do. Uh, reduce cancer and heart disease. I don't have any heart disease, and I knock on wood, don't have any cancer. Reduce asthma and allergies. Reduce and eliminate body odors. Stool has dr drastically reduced body odors. Stool has dr drastically reduced bad odors, not body odors, bad odors. Well, uh, let me look you right in the eye and tell you that has not been my case so far. Because remember I told the story about Leo the lion and how lion shits and they eat only meat and it smells so bad? Roar! Bada boom! Okay. Uh, it hasn't worked on me. I'd love to have it. But it's like, it's bad. Two dead dogs crawled up inside me and died, I guess. I don't know. Reduces or eliminates skin tags. Increases insulin sensitivity. Reduces or eliminates joint pains. Well, I can see that would be a big thing. Especially if you eliminate the weight, well, take off your knees. Eliminate arthritis. Uh... Some kind of arthritis, I imagine you can eliminate. Eliminate brain fog. I've had brain fog in the past. Uh, I haven't had a lot lately. I don't know. Just haven't had a lot lately. Prove your calmness. In, in Thailand, they call that sabai sabai, which means relax, be calm. Increase your focus and energy. Well, I've got good focus and good energy, but I slept 10 frickin' hours. I have good energy. I wanted to get up at 6, I get up at 11, but I've been staying up late because I get up late, I don't know. Lucky for me, I don't, I don't have to do anything. Remember, my definition of success is die broke, do what you want, when you want, how you want for your entire life, and I've been practicing that since I've been in my 20s. It's worked out for me so far, except for the fact that I'm fat, I'm obese, I'm overweight. Did I mention I'm fat? Okay. Uh, reduce gas and bloating. Improve your sense of smell, your sense of taste. Dandruff could be eliminated. Holy crap, would that help me out? Sometimes it'll change gray hair to the normal color. I'll have to check my eyebrows. Do I got any gray hairs in my eyebrow? Uh, by the way, just for you who don't know, I'm not bald. I got hair. I got plenty of hair. I have to shave my head every day. It grows like weeds up there. What happened was a little bit of storytelling here. 
in the COVID situation, when we were locked down, I was in America, and I'm a person who has had one barber for 58 years or whatever it was, 57 years. He started cutting my hair when I was seven years old. And he was cutting my hair in 2020 when our government and its infamous stupidity decided they had to shut down all these businesses because the COVID epidemic had to shut them down. Fucking idiots. Anyway, he wasn't allowed to cut hair. So my hair got longer and longer and longer and looked shaggier and shaggier and shaggier. I got pissed off and I just shaved it all off because I couldn't get him to cut my hair. You know, I'm the only guy, he said, in the history of him owning his own barbershop. He opened his own barbershop when I was seven. As a very young man, he opened his own. He's still cutting hair today. Ray West, I love you, buddy. I miss you, buddy. You're one of the few things I miss from the United States is coming down and talking to you. And uh, he opened his own shop right about when I was seven. My dad took me there. I got my hair cut. He said, I'm the only guy who's got that he ever cuts hair for that's had the children's discount and the senior citizens discount for the same person. Now, he's, he's still cutting hair and still looking good. And he told me why a barber has the best job in the entire world. Another story time. If you don't watch these videos to the end, you miss out on all these amazingly unique stories. And, and I was talking to him, and I said, you know, you've been cutting hair for 60 years. Why don't you just quit, retire? You own the shop. You got people working for you. I know you take long vacation. Why don't you just quit? He says, I got the best job in the world. I said, how you figure cutting hair is the best job in the world? He says, look, Mark, I come in here every day, and I know 15 or 20 of my friends are going to stop by and shoot the shit with me. I don't know who. There's no schedule, but I know I'm going to have some friends come in and, and talk. And he said, they're all my friends. He says, because I'll tell you what, in this business, if you don't like a barber, you aren't coming back. And if I don't like you, you aren't coming back. Because you'll sense that I really don't like you if I don't. And you won't come back. You'll go somewhere else. So over the period of these years, all my friends are my customers, and they come back, which is why I come back too. Uh, interesting. But for you, for you out there, I got hair. It may have been a little thin, but it wasn't really balding. It was just I've always had thin hair. I've never had thick hair. I was a thin hair person. So anyway, talks about eliminating boils and eczema and prove your skin quality and your skin tags can be reduced or eliminated. Reduces acne, which I could, I wish it could here quick. Uh, improve oral health and gum disease. Reduces gout. Enhances your testosterone and your libido. I don't need any problem with the libido part. Uh, some people reported improved hair growth. Oh, great. I got to shave twice a day now. Uh, incre increased nail growth, lack of hiccups, skin itchiness is reduced. I don't know about the multiple sclerosis, but he says so. So, okay. Uh, Increases intake of omega-3 fatty acids, eliminates plant toxins and anti-nutrients, removes inflammatory polyunsaturated fats from seed oil, and replaces them with healthy monosaturated and saturated fats. And they gave me a list of all these people 
who have YouTube channels and who teach and have a community, and that's the key word here, community, about the carnivore diet. And I appreciate the heck out of him taking the time to make these comments because they not only help me, but they'll help anybody who reads the comments. And I have gotten comments where people say, oh, carnivore diet's a fad. You'll gain all your weight back if you lose it. Uh, well, it's not a fad if it's not a diet. I don't look at it as a diet. I look at it as I empty my cupboard of the processed foods and the vegetables and fruits, and I'm just not eating them anymore. Just like I'm not drinking Diet Coke anymore. I haven't had alcohol since April of last year. Not a drop. Uh, I never had a problem with alcohol or alcoholism. I just decided it was time not to drink anymore. I guess I was working my way up to losing this weight, but didn't get here. But the bottom line is, if I can get to enough subscribers that they allow me to open a community here, I can open a community and people can make comments they can poo-poo the idea of a carnivore diet if they want. They can uh, tell us their stories if they want. They can tell us their successes and their failures. Uh, but to this man who took all this time to put this together, and it takes time. Dave, thank you very much. And I encourage everybody to comment because, believe it or not, YouTube looks at the size and length and frequency of comments on your channel. And they help promote it to other people who are looking or searching for carnivore-related subjects or air fryer-related subjects or whatever it is you're talking about. They'll promote it more. And I want to thank subscribers who I have out there who sometimes they just give it a thumbs up and say good video. Just a simple two-word comment. I know it helps the, the algorithm. And I started this channel from scratch, from zero. And I've got over a hundred subscribers luckily in the first month uh i'm not doing this to make money so i really don't give a give a damn about monetization i do know that most people only watch four minutes of my video and again i just made a 19 minute video so maybe you didn't watch the end because most people watch about four to five minutes get bored with me and leave me maybe this uh this was too much, but for those people who are really interested, I wanted to show the difference of how good comments, and I try to answer most comments, even if I give you just a thumbs up on your, on your comment because it really, I didn't have a full answer for it. But uh, it helps me a lot when you do comment. And it helps me a lot to learn about a guy who went from a double XL down to a medium shirt. I'd like to go from a 5XL down to an XL shirt and be really happy about it. So, like I said, first, first step at actually, well, maybe I haven't said this, but I believe the first step at actually losing weight it's telling the world and telling yourself and being on uh, being outright forthright and say, I'm fat. I'm obese. I weigh too fucking much. But I'm trying to do something about it. And I'm not sacrificing anything. If you seen the two inch thick ribeye I ate last night, 
Oh my God, it was delicious. We finally found a place here in Thailand that raises local beef. They sent me six two-inch thick ribeyes. Cost about $11 or there about per ribeye. And they were two inches thick. And they were just so good. Now today we got three things in the sink. We got we got one uh, we got a ribeye that we got from Bangkok beef, but it's only about an inch a uh, quarter inch and a half thick. We've got a chuck eye that we got from Bangkok beef, and we've got some hamburger balls that Noi makes up. They're about the size of your fist. She makes them up with egg and a little cheese and bacon cut up. And then she forms them into balls, puts them inside a vacuum sealer, and vacuum seals them and freezes them. Then when we want some carnivore food to eat, you can take them out, put them in the air fryer or the oven, bake them up, and you get yourself a basically bacon cheeseburger with egg in a, in a ball. And we freeze them up three to a, a vacuum seal package. If you're going to do this, you got to get a vacuum sealer. You really do. Because the one thing you need to do is you have to accept the fact that carnivore is going to be spending a little more time than eating junk and fruits and vegetables. You know, you can walk by a bowl of apples and grab an apple and eat it. It's not good for you. It's not. It, it can make you fat if you've got the right type of constitution for it. You know, you can, you can grab vegetables and you can eat real quick. You can grab processed foods. One bag of potato chips or grab them, open it up, and you're eating in a minute. Can't hardly do that with steak. Not if you want it fresh out off the, off the heat. You can cook it in advance, put it in the refrigerator, and then microwave it. But I think you're going to lose a lot of the flavor that keeps you wanting to eat steak. Because let me tell you something. I was always a steak and potatoes guy. I just gave up the potatoes. I love steak. Good steak, the melt-in-your-mouth steak, brisket. Fact, I think I might just drive to Macro and buy some brisket and cook it for that three days because I'll tell you what, a good cooked brisket, in my opinion, you might throw rocks at a ribeye. A, good, a well-cooked brisket just, man, cuts with a fork and melts in your mouth and it's so damn good. Of course, you know, you spent three days cooking this son of a bitch. Well, you get what you get. You get just like in relationships. The more you put in, the more you get out. Just like in business, the more effort you expend, the better your results. Take a cheap steak, throw it on a skillet, fry it up in the pan, and chew it until next week. That's all, folks.